I hope you're ready to take a journey through the Balkans because that's what we're about to do. I spent 30 days road tripping around the Balkans. It was my first solo road trip ever and I couldn't be more thrilled with how it turned out. When I told people I was planning on driving around the Balkans, the response was often, Wow, I've heard of the Balkans, but I don't really know what that means or where that is. So if you're scratching your head about the Balkans too, here's your geography lesson of the day. The Balkan Peninsula is generally considered to be comprised of these countries. Sometimes Greece and Turkey are considered part of the Balkans too. Different people have different definitions for exactly which countries make up the Balkans though, and some people define it based on cultural and historical context rather than geographically. Because I only spent 30 days on the road, I limited my road trip to these four countries. And before we get to all the fun stuff, let's go over the nuts and bolts of this trip. First of all, why the Balkans? Well, rewind to early January, I was pet sitting in Germany and due to leave on the 10th. The problem was I had no clue where I was going to next. I had a week and a half to figure it out. I had an idea floating around in my head a little bit about maybe going to Montenegro for a month. But when I started looking into flights, I didn't like the flight times. I didn't like the layovers. I didn't like the airlines flying from Germany to Montenegro. So I thought I'd check what other airports were around there that I could fly to, maybe drive to Montenegro from there. Well, after a little more investigation, I found Ljubljana was the best airport for me to fly to, that road tripping around the Balkans was quite doable, and that traveling as a female there was quite safe. If you've seen any of my storm chasing or Africa videos, you'll know that I love road tripping. So after this preliminary research, I decided to scrap the Montenegro for a month and instead hit the road for a month. I also wanted to go somewhere I hadn't been before. I mean, yes, I have been to Croatia and Slovenia before, but it was 10 years ago, minus Ljubljana, I would be going to different towns than I had been to before. And being there solo would be a different experience for me. So I spent the next week feverishly planning this road trip. I'm not normally one to book things ahead of time, but since I was by myself and in a region I wasn't familiar with, I wanted to make sure I had everything in place so I knew exactly where I was going and where I was staying. Speaking of staying, I'll talk a little bit about my lodging. I first thought about doing a one-way rental car and ending my trip in a different location than where I started, but seeing how much extra it would cost to do this, I decided I would make a giant loop starting and ending in Ljubljana, so this is how I envisioned my route looking. I looked for places along this route that I could stay. I try to mostly do two to three nights at each location. I did a couple of hotels, but for the most part I booked Airbnbs. And I had some specific criteria for the places I stayed. Number one, it obviously had to have good reviews. Clean, 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 no weird smells, all that good stuff. It needed to have fast, reliable Wi-Fi so I could work. And as I discovered, fast Wi-Fi in the Balkans is not the same as actual fast Wi-Fi. It had to have dedicated parking for my car. This was more of a convenience thing for me because I didn't want the stress of hunting for street parking. And lastly, as a female traveling alone, I will only stay at places owned by another female or a couple. No place is owned solely by a man. I also wanted to make sure I had a washing machine every few places I went to. So with those criteria in mind, I had a real hell of a time finding places that ticked all the boxes. Booking all my lodging definitely took the most time out of the planning process. I was also trying to keep my budget mid-range for lodging. You can certainly find cheap lodging in the Balkans. In some towns, I saw entire apartments with high reviews going for only 12 euros a night. And depending on how luxury you want to get, you can spend as high as you want. But with my mid-range budget for 30 days, I spent 1500 on lodging. Once I got everything booked, my next big question and stressor that was buzzing in my head every day was what company I was going to get my rental car from. 
I wanted a rental car company located at the airport because I knew the day I flew out of Slovenia, I'd want to drive myself to the airport and not have to deal with a shuttle or taxi. So I was limited to a handful of companies. I read a lot of reviews about being falsely charged for scratches, so my biggest priority was picking a company where I didn't have to deal with that. The companies at the airport either had very few reviews or were priced too high. So that left me focusing in on Auto Union. I ultimately went with them, although I was nervous because I had never heard of them before and I was a bit dubious about how many high stars they had. I'm not going to leave you guessing about whether or not my skepticism was warranted. I had a great experience with them. Other than a little issue at the beginning of my trip, which I will tell you about in the next video, I had no problems with them. And they have a WhatsApp number you can text with, which makes it very convenient if you have any questions or concerns. A few other details relating to cars. If you want to drive on the freeways in Slovenia, you need an e-vignette for your car, which the rental car company will charge you for. Bosnia, Croatia, and Montenegro all have toll roads that you pay at booths. You can use cash or card, or you can set your GPS to avoid all toll roads, so if you don't feel like paying for tolls, you can just make sure that your map is set to avoid toll roads. I did that sometimes if it didn't add too much extra time or take me on any crazy roads. Sometimes it's more fun to take the scenic route. If the non-toll roads added too much extra driving time though, I just paid the toll road and took it. Gas prices are certainly cheaper than places like Germany and France. Slovenia had the cheapest gas and the farther south you drove, the more the price went up. At the time I was there, Slovenia was running around 1 euro 20 something cents per liter. Montenegro was the most expensive around 150 liter. And one thing I noticed about the gas in these countries, it was the same in every station the whole day. Unlike places like Germany where they change the price multiple times a day and the cost can be higher or lower depending on which station and which city you're at, in the Balkans I didn't have to worry about picking the right gas station to fill up at, which was great. One last thing about getting around, the GPS. I never get GPS with my rental cars because 99.9% .9 of the time it's a newer car that just comes with it built in. Well, my rental car did not have GPS. It wasn't the end of the world though because I had already downloaded all the maps and pinned my lodging on maps.me. It's an app I use a lot when I'm traveling because you can use the maps offline so you don't have to blow through your data or rely on having a cell signal. And you can also use it when you're hiking because it has trails on there too. I've always viewed it quite favorably and it's been rock solid for me. Well, let me tell you, after 30 days of using this app every day, by the end of the trip, I hated it. I sounded like a psycho yelling in my car every day at an app like it was a human who had royally messed up. But sometimes this app can be so incredibly dumb like taking you off course through some rinketing town on tiny crap roads just to eventually get you back on the main highway you were already on and could have stayed on. I can't tell you how many times it did that or giving very vague directions about where to exit. And when you're driving in the Balkans, especially by yourself, it's hard to pay attention to the roads and drive defensively and have to look down and verify that your map isn't guiding you off course. Generally, you just follow the directions of where it tells you to go. But with Maps.me, you have to always double check if she's trying to take you on some kooky course. My recommendation is to either use a different app with downloadable maps, or if you're road tripping with somebody, have them check the map for you before you believe any of the directions the app tells you. Sheesh. Okay, so a few other deets you might be wondering about. If you go the Airbnb route want to cook at home, you can find everything you need at the grocery stores. The only places where there wasn't a lot of selection and variety with produce was Montenegro and Bosnia-Herzegovina. Gas stations, it's a road trip, so you'll be gassing up your car. I never had any issues finding gas stations. In fact, I felt like there were a ton of gas stations. Language barrier, didn't have any. 
Everyone was easy to communicate with, and even the people who couldn't speak English, we just found ways to communicate, and it was okay. Everyone was very friendly. There's terrific people in the Balkans. And lastly, let's talk money for a moment. So currency in Slovenia, they use the Euro. Croatia switched over to the Euro at the beginning of this year. Montenegro uses the Euro. Bosnia has their own currency, but I didn't even pull out cash when I was there. I used my credit card everywhere and the few places that took cash only accepted Euros. Obviously, it's best to pay with our local currency if you can, but don't freak out too much if you don't have the Bosnia and Herzegovina convertible mark. Another thing, I was there off-season, mid-January to mid-February, so prices were lower than if you were to go during high season. And lastly, keep in mind that what the euro to dollar conversion rate is, because depending on that, your costs might be higher than what you thought when you booked everything. So with that said, for my 30-day Balkan trip, including gas, lodging, tolls, rental car food, and other miscellaneous items, but excluding flights, I spent around 3,000 US dollars. Not bad for a month on the road. Just to give you comparison, spending a month camping and road tripping in Southern Africa for 30 days cost $10,000. Now that we got all those logistical details out of the way, Make sure you hit subscribe and the notification bell so you know each time a new video for this series comes out. I really had such a fun time on this road trip and it's been one of my favorite road trips I've ever done. I think you're gonna enjoy seeing what the Balkans is all about too. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time. <laughs>